All right, ladies and gentlemen, it was a final out in San Diego. The UNLV running Rebels getting it done against number four, San Diego State. Rebels take them 66-63. Pursuit of perfection thwarted. San Diego State now 26-1 and on the season. They were giving 14 in this game. How about this? UNLV plus 900 on the money line. Malachi Flynn hit a huge three, cut it to one for San Diego State. But that's as close as they would get as the perfect season now done. 26-1, and one, the Aztecs, as they lose to the running Rebels, 66-63. to 63. All right, welcome in here on CBS Sports HQ. She's Sherry Burris. I'm Scott Stanford. Chip Patterson on the other end. Let's talk about college action. Let's uh, our college hoops guru, Chip Patterson, with us. Uh, I yeah. think we're all shocked, Chef. I, we're I all shocked think by so, that. Chip. I mean, what is your initial reactions and takeaways from seeing San Diego State have their first loss of the year? Well, I, I don't often try and uh, assign deservedness, but this is a game that San Diego State deserved to lose. And, and we had moments, several moments in the closing stretch where San Diego State could have won this game. And, and the chances are that if San Diego State won this game, then we would not be having the same kind of headlines because they would still be undefeated. They would have taken care of business against a Mountain West team that they were favored by by double digits. But this was a game where San Diego State did not play well. San Diego State did not have much juice. They did not have much pop. And Malachi Flynn was able to put up a lot of points. But offensively, I thought the Aztecs were really lost. And I thought that, you know, when you look at a team that is just going through the non-conference, going through the conference schedule, and just seeming to dominate at every step, you wonder what's going to happen when they face some adversity. And UNLV brought the fight. UNLV brought the fight the first time they played. And now in this rematch, this one in San Diego, I thought that they showed up like the team. They felt like they were better, even though we know that Malachi Flynn's one of the best players in the country. Matt Mitchell, absolutely right there with him as one of the leaders of this San Diego State team. San Diego State is still the best team in the Mountain West as we sit here on Saturday evening, but they were not the best team on Saturday night in this game because I just didn't think that they brought enough energy to be able to sustain that undefeated record. UNLV leading majority of this game. So Chip, make sure I'm hearing you right. You're saying this was more San Diego State not doing what they need to do as opposed to the Rebels doing more right in this game? Right. I mean, UNLV is a 500 team. I mean, this is a this was a great effort and it should be complimented and we should definitely award the coaching staff and the players for what they did. But uh, we're talking about a San Diego State team that ranks in the top 10 nationally in offensive efficiency and the top 10 nationally in defensive efficiency. Going into Saturday, there were only three teams that could say that Kansas, San Diego State and Duke. And, and all of a sudden, San Diego State compared to Kansas and Duke, based on what we saw those teams do on Saturday, I mean, do they look like they deserve to belong in that conversation? So I, I think that we have seen throughout the season one version of San Diego State, a version of San Diego State that can make it to the Final Four and they can maybe even contend for a national championship. But that version of San Diego State was not what I saw against UNLV. That version that they had against UNLV, that is not going to be the kind of team that can make a Final Four run. That's the kind of team that has a high seed and maybe gets upset in the second round of the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. You know, Chip, watching this game, you know, you, you felt like we were just waiting for San Diego State to turn it on and make a run, right? It, it never happened, obviously. I mean, it did, but they didn't come close enough. Now, we've got Jerry Palm coming up in just a few minutes, but in your mind, uh, you know, A, what does this do to their number four ranking, and what about their seeding in the tournament? To, give me your thoughts on that. So I think the number four ranking will take a greater adjustment than their seed. We could see them fall potentially uh, all the way down to nine or 10 in the polls, depending on how the AP pollsters react on Monday. But I think their seed remains the same. So hurt in the rankings, hurt in the minds of, of the college football experts that are doing their prognostication. But in terms of the way the NCAA tournament is gonna look at this resume, this is one dot. This is one dot on, on a full field of data with a lot of other good examples of why San Diego State should be a number one seed. 
Uh, I, I always cede to Jerry Palm on these matters, but my expectation is that should San Diego State be able to continue on this path, if they bounce back, if they win the rest of the regular season games, win the Mountain West Conference Tournament, then I expect that on Selection Sunday they will be a number one seed. And while this loss in the moment certainly is a little bit disturbing and might change what you expect about what they will do in the NCAA Tournament, it should not change how you feel they should be seeded in the NCAA Tournament. So I look at this loss and I think, well, you know, does this change where I'm going to predict them to finish in the NCAA tournament on Selection Sunday when I'm filling out my brackets with the rest of America? Yeah, it absolutely impacts my perception of them, but that's not what the selection committee uses. They use the hard data, and the hard data from the entire season says that San Diego State, at least right now, if they are to continue winning after this, does deserve to be a number one seed. Yeah, Jerry Palm having him there for now. And you said it might change your perception the way you would, you know, kind of place uh, San Diego State on your final bracket. Do you take Saturday's loss as a sign of maybe things to come when it comes to March Madness, maybe an early exit? Potentially, I, it gives it gives me some pause. Uh, not that they lost, but the way that they lost. And you mentioned it. I mean, there were so many opportunities in this second half for San Diego State to come back. UNLV was not playing the kind of game where they could put San Diego State away. It felt like the rest of the building and the fans in the building had already sort of given up on the chances of a win well before the game was in doubt. I mean, watching this game, I was continually frustrated with San Diego State's inability to capitalize on the opportunities that UNLV even handed them. And, and look, this is a bad game. We are talking about college basketball and they were undefeated and there is something to be said for the amount of pressure that is put on the shoulders of 18 to 22 year olds in this kind of position and then look malachi flynn had 24 points i mean he did everything that you would want from a top 10 player in the country from somebody who's expected to be a team leader but again I, we were talking about san diego state in the same breath as a kansas or a duke heading into the day and i see this performance not just the loss but the inability to come back when it looks like they could steady the ship against this UNLV team. Uh, I, I just think it was a really disappointing performance from the Aztecs, and, and it does make me uh, reconsider uh, where I see them going in the NCAA tournament. Pursuit of perfection thwarted. It's UNLV shocking San Diego State, 66-63. Chip Patterson, thank you, my friend. Great job as always. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.